The next set of criteria we will address determines cable transitions. The first three criteria require us to use various cable types with respect to various depths. This can be easily done with the Define Cable by Depth tool, accessible through either the Profile View window or the Cable Assembly window. Because we moved a point in our path, we first need to update the Profile View window so the data matches the depths along the new path. Now we can start to define the range of depth we would like to use for each cable type. To change the range value, double-click the end depth value you would like to change and hit Enter when you are done. It will automatically change the succeeding range. To save these ranges and corresponding cable types for use in future projects, click Save. To continue the process, click Next to bring up a window where you will be given a list of cable transitions. Click OK to set these changes. Use Plan View to see your newly added cable transitions. The last cable transition criterion is based on the location of path crossings. We will use the Path Crossings tool for assistance with this. We are interested in seeing where the path crosses with the existing cables, so we will choose that database and select that feature. It is important to note that the label prefix for the crossings to be added to the path is CX. This will be used in the next step, which will directly address our last criterion. Clicking Find Crossings will find the points at which our path and the existing cables intersect. Notice that you can also use this tool to find the angles at which the paths cross. Now we will add these points to the path. We will create buffer zones around these points so we will know where to place cable transitions due to the crossings. Select Constant Distance from Feature and change the value to 6000, which is the minimum distance away from the crossing that the cable transition must occur. Next, select Buffer around path points. To indicate that you only want the buffer to be around the path crossing points, select Label Starts and type in CX. In the case that the path crossings occur in water deeper than 1,500 meters, we will add another buffer zone of 10 kilometers. We could ignore this first crossing because it occurs at a water depth less than 1,000 meters. For the other crossings, use the Map Tips tool set to depth to determine which buffer zone to use. Then add a point at the edge of the appropriate buffer zone to be used for cable transitions. To make them cable transitions, open the Point Properties window and check the box for Cable Transition. Select LWP for the first transition and hit Apply to set the change. To access the second cable transition point, use the Next button. Select LW to transition the cable back. This will be done for the remaining cable transitions.